Now I showed you a time value money chart that starts at 20 though. So what, what gives, right? If you've got cash flow three to 5%, appreciation at 6.4, principal pay down, amortization is probably 5%, tax shelter benefits another three to 5%. That doesn't really get you to 20 to 30%. Well, what's happening here is that people are taking advantage of a concept called leveraged appreciation. And we talk a lot about leverage sometimes in the uh, in the operating sense in that you want to try and buy buildings that have a cap rate higher than your interest rate or higher than your cost of funds. But you can also apply this leverage concept to appreciation. So if we have 55 years of data and we know that over the long run, real estate does actually always go up, not necessarily over the next one year, two years and so on, but 50 years, 10 years plus it does then we can apply that long-term math and we can apply leverage to it and we can change how we might forecast future returns. So let's just look at a simple example here to explain this concept. The basic idea behind leverage appreciation is that most people buy with some of your own money down and a lot of somebody else's money, OPM, right? Other people's money, usually from a bank to buy an asset. As the asset appreciates in value, the increase in value all goes to the investor. The lender doesn't get to participate in that. You only owe the lender the loan. So mathematically expressed, it's leveraged appreciation and it multiplies your return on equity from appreciation. It sounds like a bunch of mumbo jumbo. So let's just look at our a simple example here. Let's, see if, let's say you had $300,000 cash to invest and you were raised to believe that all debt is bad and if you can afford something cash, you should buy it in cash. You could go buy a very small investment property for 300 grand. And if in your average year, it went up by 5%, that's just me using more conservative math than our 55 year chart, then 5% of $300,000 is $15,000. And in year two, it's worth $315,000. Your return on equity in year one is the appreciation divided by your down payment, which in this case was the purchase price because you didn't use a loan. So that's 5%. So for those of you that have been reading ahead already, you're seeing what we do now in scenario two. What if instead you took the $300,000, used it as a down payment, you got a 75% loan to value loan on an apartment building that's totally normal, average, typical loan, and you buy a $1.2 million apartment building. And we make sure that whatever $1.2 million apartment building you buy is going to generate enough rent to pay the debt service on the $900,000 loan. That $1.2 million building goes up at 5% as well. And you make $60,000 in appreciation instead of 15, the building's worth 1.26 in year two. Now the math for ROE in that example though is the $60,000 you made from appreciation, again, divided by the down payment, the amount you put into the deal. So 300,000, 20% ROE instead of five, you made $60,000 instead of 15 with the same amount of money. So it looks like a little magic trick, but this is actually how it works. It's just that simple. Uh, you can complicate the heck out of this with spreadsheets and analysis and all kinds of stuff. But at the end of the day, it really does work this way. And this is how people create multi-generational wealth through buying real estate and managing a portfolio over decades.